excellent data set to prove the point and then solicited a scientist to publish it under his name so that it be, could, could, become, could become a fact in the literature. Okay. Very savvy manipulation of scientific credibility in this story, which I can't tell in detail here, but intrigued me a lot. Also, it uh, was very clear that as the person who is always the bearer of bad news to a breeder who might uh, contact her by email or call her on the telephone, she can't be the emotional support group. And to make a fact a fact in an effective way, that is to say it's something people will act on, required also the emotional support system that would allow a breeder not to feel stigmatized by the genetic disease of his or her dog. Mm -hmm. So that the emotional economy of the stabilization of a fact was also quite deliberately engaged as part of the work of doing genetics in this breed. So the research design, the mating design, the, biochem the alliance with a veterinary ophthalmologist and then with biochemical geneticists, the alliance uh, with people who will form support groups, the alliance with the breed group movers and shakers to uh, get a certain degree of openness, the management of the material culture of making a fact whole, namely Australian shepherds are subject to collie eye anomaly and action has to be taken. The kind of, of everyday story of what constitutes a fact, its literary material and social technologies, is in C.A. Sharp's practice in a, in a, I think, extremely interesting way. The contrastive person I would uh, introduce here is a woman named Linda Weiser, a woman about 60 years old, who has bred Great Pyrenees, livestock guardian dogs, for about 30 years and been involved in the introduction of these Bosque livestock guardian dogs in the American ranch in connection with wolf reintroduction programs also. So that the livestock guardian dogs uh, might minimize the amount of shooting and poisoning that goes on in the reintroduction of the wolves who will utilize the fringes of the national park territories where they are um, reintroduced and will raid the ranches. Um, the use of the livestock guardian dogs as wolf predator repelling organisms is a very interesting issue. She also manages the, the working dog people in the breed, the pet dog people in the breed, the rescue operations from mistreatment, the health and genetics databases, uh, very strong uh, ethical um, police force <laughs> among these, these movers and shakers in the breed around what constitutes proper training, uh, running a library of information to educate people up about how to have one of these 120 pound dogs in a proper and appropriate way. Makes a really interesting contrast with the um, terrorism stories of the so-called dog holocaust, um, you know, Rhine, Westphalia, and, uh, stories out of Hamburg um, and the, and the um, yellow press use of the, the terminology of holocaust without any historical consciousness, which I suspect you've seen even more than I. Well, let me have the next slide and I'll conclude this story okay. um, by a, uh, a mm -hmm. the, the telemetrically uh, uh, equipped wolf <laughs> that is being introduced to the wild pack by her mentor. The mentor is saying, we found her wandering at the edge of the forest. She was raised by scientists. <laughs> <laughs> okay. This is my figure of, of ethnographic practice, of the companion animal species, of the relationship of the human raised by wolves, the wolf raised by humans, that kind of replay of the wolf, st uh, the wolf boy story, the wolf child story. Don't worry, she was raised by scientists. She'll be a little strange for a while, not to worry. Uh, this is another illustration of contemporary companion animal culture, too, at the, these edges between, um, I think biodiversity requires that kind of technology for its definition and management. Uh, just as I think diversity is the name of the game in capital accumulation, diversity is the name of the game. Um, biodiversity, the market, and technology are joined at the hip. Uh, this is not news. Biodiversity um, is, as a word, very recent. Um, and I involved in this kind of sociality very deeply. Next slide. Uh, this is actually a, an anthropologist, Faye Ginsberg, whose father did research on wolves. That's one of his wolves. Uh, but I won't have time to talk about that slide, so let's go right on to the next slide. The girl's best friend is, of course, your father's wolves. <laughs> now, um, I think engaging in the study of technoscience involves a number of important reversals. <laughs> Those of you who know about border collies, who, near as I can tell, uh, cheat 
They win all the dogs, dog sport performance contests. They're being used to run birds off of runways in major international airports. Uh, they are overachievers. Uh, <laughs> border collies can work independently uh, up to a couple of miles away from a handler to round up recalcitrant sheep. They can both work to very close command with a handler or on their own at great distances. Border collies, on the whole, um, are too good to believe. They are also, uh, one, one border collie fancier puts it, obsessive. they have obsessive compulsive disorder uh, and make very poor pets. A border collie that makes a good pet is not a border collie. Uh, ordinary people should not have border collies. It's a bad mistake. Uh, they require a kind of job that most people can't provide their, uh, their border collies. Now, for a sheep to, to get the border collies at the, you know, the, for the sheep to pen the border collies at the sheep trials is the kind of reversal or the kind of what I think of as epistemological whiplash <laughs> that studying technoscience always produces. You think you know what you're going to find, but in fact what happens is a constant kind of ontological and epistemological whiplash, such as that particular reversal. And then the last slide is another joke on the all the time everywhere <laughs> mistake. <laughs> the all the time everywhere mistake that those of us who do uh, scholarly work regularly make when we don't really intend to make it, uh, we're now not looking, you know, we're at a great, I think we are at a moment of historical mutation, whoever we are and whatever this moment is. There is something happening globally um, that is changing the name of the game of life and death for billions of people. There are mutations in life ways going on that, that we try to name inadequately by globalization and other really anemic terms. Technoscience is another term that tries to name these mutations in chances of life and death for all the organisms on the planet. Okay? Well, um, at, in the Renaissance, another figure of technoscience culture, um, Da Vinci is Vitruvian man. Uh, the, ma the man of perfect proportions is a favorite uh, iconographic figure of uh, man, genius, machine, uh, art, science, genius, uh, convergence. Well, I like much better Harris's uh, cartoon of the, of the dog of perfect proportions because of the joke it makes on the mistake of both relativism and universalism. The joke it makes on the mistakes that are so built into our philosophical discourse that we don't know how to do inquiry without remaking those mistakes. But perhaps our best hope is that we will remake the mistakes in interesting ways. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Now you see what makes her so unique among the thinkers. She pays attention to the details. And that's only because she was raised as a scientist and cannot believe in her own assumption without giving a lot of proof. You know, I Why did my cells die? <laughs> <laughs> I could uh, you, uh, go with your thesis and only with 1% of that, just one of the examples would be totally enough proof for me, you know, <laughs> I can. <laughs> so, uh. and, uh, and it's, that is the first thing. The second thing is, it's interesting, you know, uh, with all this material, um, or at least the real challenge is not actually to challenge you in terms of your material because you have been in the dog house so long, you know, there is no way that we can really uh, compete here with you. But uh, to ask, what is, what is the thesis? What does it mean? What can we do with this kind of uh, material, uh, not in general? You know, the typical question, you know, what can we do with it? And this, I think, uh, happened also to your cyborg. I understand that you said, I made it as a particular historical thing, as a history thing, uh, and, and you cannot understand it properly if you don't understand... The detail. The detail, yes. But what it took on a life on, of its own. Sure did. And I personally... <laughs> God forbid. Yeah, yeah, no, no, sorry. It certainly did. <laughs> Look at me, you know, I became one of your fans <laughs> because I didn't care much about your <laughs> historical stuff, but I, but this metaphor started to convince me, you know, and I, and I, right, and I understood that this is a very important way kind of to discuss the relation of men and uh, machine in a different way, not as a... Uh,